So uh, uh, why go back to school? Why why go get your MBA? Well, it's, it, it was important for me because I left early. Well, I left school early from Auburn mm -hmm. as a junior. So when I first came out, um, obviously I had some time to catch up on. So when I retired, that was the first thing I wanted to do, was go, go back and finish my undergrad. How hard was that? You know what? It wasn't as hard as I, I thought it was. I used to think school was so hard when I was in school, yeah. but it really what made it harder is knowing that you had to do football practice and you're so tired, and then you got to do study hall, then you have to do it all over again. That was the hardest part. So you get done with that, and then you're like, I just want to keep going. I just want to keep, yeah, yeah, no, keep paying somebody else to, to, for, for my yeah, education. Yeah, you know what? In life, and I, I think it's fair to say for all men, we like options. And so yeah. whether it's job or whatever you decide your options are, uh, you want to have more options. So for me, I felt like with me being in the business world and having an opportunity you know, to be an entrepreneur, uh, it makes it that much better to understand the why of finance versus just doing something because somebody tells you to do it. What's it like to write the check, though? <sighs> you know what? As long as you have money coming in, yeah. it's good to write that check okay. because, you know, that's the, that's a good way but to the, look but at there's it. But there's a lot of guys who are like, uh, they, they, they brush off not just how expensive it is, but what it's like to play in all the things you get playing in college, having done it both, having played at Auburn on scholarship on full grant and aid, and then gone back and paid your way for your MP MBA. I'm just wondering what that experience is like. I, it was... Uh, I, it was good, and you know, I took advantage of uh, the NFLPA, the trust. Yep. I also took advantage of the league office, the NFL league office, from the reimbursements of everything. So that really cut down my cost to go back to school dramatically. That's so awesome. That was that's, huge. That, that's awesome that they helped defray some of that cost. All right, so this book is about the linebacker position. Right on. And it's really cool because it's uh, it's not like my son's seven. And he's a sports kid. He's a jock. He plays a bunch of sports. Right now, he's reading one on the NBA, which is kind of the same. It's not as it's not as visually pleasing. It's a little bit dated or whatever. Checked it out at the library. He was showing me it this morning. He was asking me questions about Jerry West and Kobe Bryant, whatever. So you went back through and interviewed eleven other linebackers, and your own personal story is in here as well. Correct. Correct. How do you pick eleven linebackers? Like, there's been a lot of linebackers, a lot of good ones, and. Like the signature player, some of the great defenses. How did you pick them? Well, it, it was it was tough, and I went through a excruciating time to where I was just trying to vent out all of the guys because you don't have the leisure to talk to everybody to even see. Okay, this is the guy I want. Uh -huh. And so for me, I did enough research just behind the scenes online, being able to talk to other reporters who even covered some of the guys when they were playing, going back from the seventies, the eighties. Um, 90s, my generation, and then also the early 2000s. And so that's how I came up with the list of guys that I did. Okay, so did you have this, like, you got to be a real linebacker? Like a 3-4 outside linebacker is really really a defensive end, right? Like Lawrence Taylor is one of the great linebackers. But he's a defensive end. I mean, he's rushing the, rushing the passer. Whereas, like, you did it all, right? Like, you, you, have, to, you have to be a leader. You have to be in coverage. You have to cover. You know, you got to play the run. Like, you, you got to shed blocks. You got to blitz. You... So was it like, look, I'm only going to do middle linebackers. I ain't doing any of these outside linebackers. No, I had to put the outside guys in because I think that's what makes it, it is what it is. Okay. And, and that's the beauty about being a linebacker because uh, we're responsible for so many things, but we can do a lot of things from rushing the passer or just covering from the backside. And then you can implement both. And that's the best of both worlds when you talk about defensive players. All right, so who's your white whale, though? Who's the one who you did not get in the book that you wanted to get? Or who's the, who's, who's, or who's the toughest that you had to cut? Because you got 11 dudes, and there's some names that I know of linebackers that aren't on here that I know you th probably thought about. Uh, the, 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 that's, that's a very good question. <laughs> Actually, one of the best questions I've had, the guy who uh, we were trying to make it happen, Yeah. And we just could not connect on the schedules. It was Ray Lewis. And every time he had a second in, we would set it up, something would happen. You know, how, and, how and can I get, how, he blew you off? No, 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 no. He a little bit? We, 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 we talked all the time, and we always have a relationship. So it was just from the schedules and everything. And so for me, I was like, you know what? I can't wait any longer because then I, I wanted to be strategic about the time I dropped the book. And the forward in it, um, Tio Spikes joining us. The book is called, and it's a, it's a really cool design. 
uh, of, of the book as well. It's called Behind the Mask Tequio, by Takeo Spikes, the linebacker edition. The forward's by Dick LeBeau. Of course, Dick LeBeau, not only the, the architect of Pittsburgh's great defenses, but those defenses were built by about linebackers, right? Yeah. So, like, who would know better about linebackers? Uh, all right, here's what I want to do. I'm going to go through these guys. You tell me one thing that is interesting. All right. It doesn't have to be just, all right, so you had Chuck Bignerick. He didn't give a damn about whoever he played against. He was going to rip your head off. Bobby Bell. The more you can do, the more successful you will be. Cornelius Bennett. Never played the game for attention, but his substance as a player on and off the field, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. S somebody, you talk about substance on and off the field, Derek Brooks. You don't need a, uh, money to change people's lives. The only thing you need is uh, time and a caring heart. You know what's interesting about Derek Brooks? This is a quick aside. Uh, Takeo Spike showing us the Doug Gottlieb show. Um, there's a guy named Lafonso Ellis. I don't know if you guys know Fonz. Fonz played at Notre Dame, played in the NBA forever. And I ran into Fonz in the, in the airport. And Derek Brooks falls in this category. There's, there's like, I don't know, like probably 10 people in this business I know who I feel like such an inferior human being. Like, wow, you're so much better a person than I am. Like, you like you, affect, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Derek Brooks, Derek Brooks made you feel that way, right? He's like charitable. He's like, oh, I, I just, uh, sorry, I, 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 I'm sorry I didn't call you back. I just took 50 kids to Africa, and I, I just, I apologize. And you're not even like, mad at it. You're just like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry I even right. called while you were going I just Africa. built a school in Africa. I apologize for not getting back to you. It's totally on me. Like, no, it's on me. But Derek Brooks is that way, correct? Yeah. That's him. It sums it up. Uh, Harry Carson. I'm going to tell you exactly how it is, and you take it for whatever it's worth. Uh, there's a dude who works here at uh, CBS Sports Network, London Fletcher. Little, he was a little dude. Like, he's got to be the, the smallest guy of the modern day. He, he, he is the smallest guy out of all of the guys. I don't know him and Singletary go, you know, hand to hand, but the thing about London Fletcher, it was his journey. He went through a lot. And a lot of people don't know that because he refused to talk about it. And the beauty of it is... It's in, it's in the book? It's in the book. All right. Kevin Green just got into, the, uh, got into the Hall of Fame. Right on. Well, tell me one thing about Kevin Green. He was kind of a wild... I, I felt like he was a wild man on the football field. I don't care who you are, what hood you're from, what color and what race you believe in, I'm going to dominate you. I don't know who Ted Hendricks is. Who's Ted, Ted, Ted Hendricks? Hey, stop it now. No, I don't. You don't... Ted Hendricks? No. The Mad Stork? No. Stop it. I don't. Hall of Famer? No, no. Who? Legend I, from the University of Miami? How old? Ted is in the upper, maybe like low 60s. Okay. Yeah, but high 50s, low 60s. But uh, yeah, Ted Hendricks is, he's the renaissance man. A man that appreciates the, the creative side, artistic, loves to paint. Uh, many facets to him. Uh, Mike Singletary with the crazy eyes was that a, was that a, did he know he was doing the crazy eyes? No, that's his real eyes or crazy eyes. You know, Mike is uh, Mike is the best way to sum up Mike Singletary. He's straight principle. Everything I do is with the purpose. What what do you divulge in here that it, it like makes you more vulnerable? What do you talk about in this book about? Because part of it is about yourself, your own journey. Right. What is in there that that is a little bit more vulnerable than maybe most people have ever seen from you. I think for my story is, is really going back to my roots of how I was raised and the expectations that my mother and father set for me. And so a lot of people don't know just the fact that, you know, me growing up in a two-parent home, I don't care so much what society says as these are the rules and this is how you must govern yourself. I don't care about that. For me, I felt like my standard of living or the price that was put on me to, from wearing the Spike's name on that jersey was way higher than anybody in society could say, this is how you should govern yourself. It's interesting that you said, you talked about it, growing up in a two-parent home. I was fortunate to grow up in a two-parent home as well. George Carl joined us last week. He's caught some heat, but if you actually read the substance of the book, he kind of, he talked about how hard it must be for some of these athletes who didn't grow up with a, with a dad. Um, how... Should we be talking about this, I guess, is the, is the question, right? Like, you volunteered that, but that's part of your upbringing. There are some like, well, that's his personal business. Do you think it's fair game to talk about somebody 
growing up without a dad as part of the makeup of who they are? No, I, I don't think there's fair game. It's only fair game if that person decides to come to the table and say, you know what, I understand I haven't done everything right in the past, and this could be a reason why, but for somebody else to take advantage of someone else's story and not give them an opportunity to speak up for themselves versus you speaking for them, I, I don't like that. I can't appreciate that, and that's the reason why I have so much enjoyment for the project of creating Behind the Mask because... I had an opportunity to spend a day with all of these guys and really talk to them and really let them speak and hear their soul talk when they talk about what it took for them to become great. It's a, it's a great, like, coffee table book, or if you're just a sports fan, Behind the Mask uh, by Takeo Spikes. He's joining us in studio here on the Doug Gottlieb Show, CBS Sports Radio. Uh, arguably the most legendary Auburn player is Bo Jackson, won the Heisman Trophy for the Tigers down the plains. He came out last week and said that if his kids had asked him to play football, he'd smack him in the mouth. <laughs> um and he said it's because of CTE. You know, like, what ended his career was the hip injury, which right. uh, obviously occurred when he's playing for the Raiders. What are your feelings of once you learn more about CTE and whether or not you'd encourage people to have their kids play football? Every day we're learning a little bit more about CTE. And, you know, sometimes I have memory loss, but I don't know whether or not to chalk it up to playing football or just because of age or just over time. And so for me, you know, I don't have a son. But if, you know, one day if I'm fortunate enough to have a son, I wouldn't necessarily push him to play football because I know there's other ways to be able to take advantage of just your athletic ability. But uh, I wouldn't push him to play, but I probably wouldn't stop but him to gonna play. he's going to want to be like you. Like, he's going to hear stories of death. Like, you know, he's going to hear... Like, my, my, my deal with my son is I don't think... I don't know if, he'll, if he's as big as me. Could he be a basketball player? Like... I was very fortunate. Like, my dad was a coach. My brother's a coach. Like, I grew up around it, and I'm the biggest one in my family, believe it or not. Uh, but if he's smaller than me, so, but but I know that, and he's told my my wife, like, you know, I want to be like dad. Dad loves basketball. Like, I love all sports. Uh, he's, you're, if you have a son, if you're fortunate to have a son, he's going to want to be like you. And so you could say, like, well, I leave it up to him, but, like, he wants to be like those jerseys hanging on the wall. That's a hard thing. But you, you know what? That, that At the end of the day, this is where... You know, you hate it because you don't have an opportunity to have your kids see you play, which will be the case if I have a son. But the good thing is when he come out the womb and we're watching TV, I can force feed him basketball. Yeah, I can force feed him baseball. And so from that, he can kind of make his own decision from that, and I can push it in a subtle way. Uh, but I love the game of football, man. If I had to go back and do it all over again, would I do it? Yeah, I'd do it uh, because I don't. It's a, it, to me, there's not enough definitive things out there to say, you know what, you are going to be jacked up by this time period, this age. And, I, you know, if I knew that, then I'll say, you know what, I'll, uh, but I'm not going to push him to play such a violent game, especially when I understand the economics of the game and how you can attain it from doing other things. 